welcome back to this course in this session i am going to go through a new topic called surface design in catia v5 this week i will talk about the often used commands in the wireframe and surface design toolbars then i will walk you through a couple of exercises to understand how surface design is done in catia v5 and also create drawings for these exercises when you need to design complex components like a bumper of an automobile the instrumental panel beside the steering wheel etc surface design is the most used method in the industry plastic which is an easily moldable material is used for producing numerous components in the manufacturing industry so 3d surface design is often applied for plastic component design catia v5 has a workbench called wireframe and surface design Wireframe features allows us to create points, lines and curves in the 3D space without using the constraint based approach that we use in the Sketcher workbench. The surfacing features like sweep, fill, blend etc construct these free form profiles into surfaces to make complex shapes. Wireframe and surface tools can be integrated with solid modeling tools in the part design workbench to achieve a hybrid design. While working inside part design workbench if there is a need to access commands from the wireframe toolbar there is another workbench called generative shape design under shape design category let me demonstrate some of the commands you see in this slide in catia v5 in the catia window i have a simple sketch open here from the wireframe toolbar i will select the points repetition command in the definition window i will select the sketch on the screen for the curve field i will leave the parameters field to instances and update instances value to 4 if i click on the preview button you can see that points are created on the selected sketch if i check the box for create normal planes also and then click on preview the command creates planes on those points as well I will click on cancel to exit this command. The extremum command creates elements like points, faces or edges at a maximum or minimum distance in a defined direction from a curve, point or pad elements. For example, I will draw a curve here and then exit the sketcher workbench. If I open the extremum command and select this sketch for element and z explain for direction fields and click on preview we can see the point that is added at the extreme end of the curve I will do this on the previous sketch and then hide the sketch A line is formed vertically as the element at the extreme end of the defined direction is a line and not a point. Same applies to a surface. Several other elements like planes, curves, projections, intersection features are also available in the wireframe toolbar. In this slide, we can see the features available in the surfaces and operations toolbars. I shall walk you through various surfaces and operations toolbar commands while using them in the exercises that follow. Back in the Catia window, I will select the extrude command from the surfaces toolbar. For the profile field, I will click on the sketch scene in the graphics area. Observe how Catia extended the surface normal to the default plane. The default plane that Catia took into consideration here is yz plane if i select xz plane in the direction field catia throws an error that reads the profile is locally parallel to the extrusion direction the extrusion cannot be defined at that place choose a profile and a direction that are not parallel meaning the profile of the sketch should be normal or perpendicular to the plane that we select for the direction field i will click on okay here I can specify the dimension limit value here as well. Mirrored extent and reverse direction options are available for the extrude command just like we saw in the pad command. I will click on cancel to look at other commands. 
let me also clear these lines out to proceed further. Now, let's see how the revolve command works. I will select the revolve option and select the sketch on the screen for the profile field and then select V direction for the revolution axis field. I can specify the angular limits in both directions. I will update angle 1 to 360 degrees. As you can see, a round surface is formed. I will now click on OK to exit this command window. A new element called Revolute is added to the geometrical set 1. You know that lines, points, curves, planes etc. are considered as geometrical elements in CATIA. These entities are saved under geometrical sets. Similarly, in the surface design workbench, CATIA creates surfaces with zero thickness. These surfaces are considered geometrical elements and are listed under geometrical sets. Once the desired profile is made using the wireframe and surface design tools, thickness is added to the surfaces to make them solid bodies, which are ready to be manufactured. Components designed using surfacing tools are generally manufactured using mold tools or casting. Mold tools, which include core, cavity, pins, etc., are also designed using 3D CAD. Next, I will select the line command from the wireframe toolbar. For the line type field, I will select the normal to surface option from the drop down list. For the surface field, I will select the top surface of the revolute feature as shown. I will select point 1 for the point field. Let's update the start value to 0 and end value to 330 mm. I will click on reverse direction and then click on OK to exit this command window. You saw how we use the line command in the Sketcher workbench. It is the same line command here in the wireframe toolbar with some additional options that cater to surfaces. Next, I will create a point at 40 mm from the center in the negative z direction. I will draw another line of length 180 mm with the point direction option as shown. Next, I will walk you through the sweep command. Sweep feature helps extend an object along a defined path. So, I will select the sweep command from the surfaces toolbar. From the profile type, let's select explicit. The other options are line, circle and conic. They each require different inputs to form swept surfaces. I will leave the subtype as with reference surface. For the profile field, I will select the horizontal line and for the guide curve field, I will select the vertical line as shown. Let's select ZX plane for the surface field. The law option became active now. I will click on the law button to define the kind of curve we want. I will select the linear law type and update the end value to 360 degrees. I will click on close and then click on the preview button. I can see the expected curved surface, so I will click on the OK button to exit this window. Let me draw another sketch on the YZ plane. I will use axis and spline commands here.
Once I exit the Sketcher workbench, I will use the Revolve command from the Surfaces toolbar one more time on this curve. Next, let's see how the Intersection command works. In the Intersection definition window, for the first element field, I will select the Sweep 1. For the second element field, I will select Revolute 2 from the specification tree. A line that is common to both the swept surface and the revolved surface is created. Let me hide the surfaces to see the resulting line clearly. Now, let us see the sweep command again. This time, I shall use the circle profile type. The subtype is center and radius. For the center curve, I will select intersect 1. Let's leave the radius value as 20 mm. Now, I will exit this window. See how the circular profile is swept along the curved line that was created using the intersection command. Next, I will use the trim command from the operations toolbar to remove the extra surface from the bottom side of the XY plane as shown. Next, I shall use the circular pattern command from the replication toolbar to create multiple instances of this spiral profile. In the circular pattern definition window, I will change the parameters option to complete crown from the drop down list. This option assumes that instances are created along 360 degrees. Let's create six instances. The object to pattern is the spiral feature and reference element is Z-axis. So, this is how some of the features in wireframe and surfaces toolbars work. Let's move on to doing the first exercise. In the first exercise, we will design the model scene in this picture using the surfacing tools. Generally, a styling team works on the raw design of a component using a non-CAD software. This file is later imported into CATIA and then worked upon to construct the surfaces of the component. The surface design is then in turn made into a solid body by adding thickness to the surface model. If you look at this model, there is a circular boss and a rectangular boss. Both the bosses have bushes on top. A rectangular passage connects the bosses and they are surrounded by a base frame. The entire object is hollow from the inside. I will walk you through modeling this part with all the features and then create a drawing of this model. So, let's start the design. In the first step of this exercise, I will use the commands from the Sketcher and Generative Shape Design workbenches. I will create intersecting surfaces and use the split command to form the shape shown in this picture. I have a new part open in CATIA V5. I will name this part Exercise 1. As part of the first step, let's create a geometrical set and name it Circular Boss. We shall learn how to use the commands from the Surfaces toolbar like Extrude, Split, Join and Edge Fillet. Now, I will create point with X, Y and Z at zero coordinates. Next, I will start a position sketch with YZ plane as reference. I will select projection point as origin type and point 1 as the reference. I will draw these circles of diameters 36mm, 84mm and 114mm. Now, I have a fully defined sketch, so I will exit the Sketcher workbench and from the Start menu, 
I can change the workbench to generative shape design. I will now select the extrude command from the surfaces toolbar. For the profile field, I will select sketch 1 from the specification tree. The circular boss's diameter is 84 mm. I need to extrude just this circle. But the sketch contains 3 circles. And that is why it is extruding all 3 of them when we use this command. So, how do we get around this problem? If I right click on the profile field as shown, I can click on the create extract option. In the elements to extract field, I can select a specific element like so. I will click on OK to exit this window. As you can see, only 84 mm dia circle is selected for extrusion. I will select YZ plane for the direction field. The create extract option basically created an additional circle of the same diameter on the same plane and selected that circle for extrusion. The height of the circular boss is 48 mm. I will pull the direction arrow in the graphics area to a distance more than 48 mm. Next, I will start another sketch in the XY plane as shown. I will draw a horizontal line at a height of 48 mm. Now, let's exit the sketcher and extrude this line. In the extruded surface definition window, the profile value is automatically updated with sketch 2 and direction field to XY plane. I will select the checkbox for mirrored extent to extend the surface on the other side as well. I will click on OK to exit this window. We shall now learn how to use the split feature. I will select the split command from the operations toolbar. Element to cut is the circular profile that was made. So, I will select extrude 1 for this field from the graphics area. For the cutting element sections, I will select extrude 2. If I rotate the model, you can see that part of the circular surface is greyed out. This indicates the part of the element that is going to be cut out. You can click on the other side button. If you need the other side to be cut. Once I click on OK, the part of the circular surface above the flat surface is cut off. Let us perform the split operation another time. For the element to cut field, I will select the flat surface, which is extrude 2 in the specification tree. For the cutting elements field, let's select the circular surface, which is split 1 from the specification tree. If I click on other side, the correct element to be cut off is greyed out. Now, I will click on OK to complete this command. Fillet operation can be performed on the surfaces as well. I can select the edge fillet command from the operations toolbar. For the objects to fillet field, if I select the edge as shown, Katia is throwing an error. To perform a fillet operation, the faces around the selected edge should belong to one element. Here, we have two elements. One is the circular surface and the other is a flat surface. Katia requires us to join these two surfaces to be able to apply fillet operation. So, to achieve this, I can use the join command from the operations toolbar. I shall select both the surfaces from the graphics area as shown and click on OK to complete the join command. Now, if I select the connecting edge, the definition window allows me to fillet this edge. I will give a radius of 9mm and click on OK. Let's apply a color to this circular boss from the graphics properties toolbar.